The Clash 3D games are a series of free, third-person shooters. Since about 2019, I've been occasionally playing them, either for a bit of quick fun or to laugh at their total absurdity. But now I'm a more introspective person, and it's time I review this game series, start to finish. This was the first Clash 3D game I ever played. You play as a farmer with a shotgun, fighting off enemies around a large barnyard. There is an AK-47 hidden in the barn's rafters, which will invariably be taken by the enemy team and used against you within the first 20 seconds of a round. The movement is a bit weird, but you can backflip, allowing you to get over barriers. By searching through the nearby houses you can find medkits, and when you pick one up, the character makes this sound. I think this might be supposed to be like a Cowboys vs Native Americans thing, but I can't really tell. Let's check the description and- oh... I guess it is. Aside from that, this game is pretty good. The combat's a mixed bag though. The best way I can describe it is that both you and your enemies have extremely powerful weapons, so you have to be quick to fire. There's no room for mistakes when you inevitably get into combat, either you're dead in 5 seconds or the enemy is. It's actually pretty reminiscent of a western gunfight. My favourite thing to do is to upgrade the shotgun, and then you can do this. My god, is that cathartic. Some games would just have vague meat bits explode out of a guy when you jib them, but this game actually pulp enemies. I think I saw two skulls come out of a guy once. Unless you upgrade, you'd have to fight hard against these enemies, since your teammates aren't much help. Farm Clash is a good introduction to the series in my opinion, but it's not the best game by a long shot. Ah, Rocket Clash. I have fond memories of this one. You play as who I assume is a Spetsnaz soldier, fighting through a launch facility. The shotgun is replaced with an AK-47, but I don't really care for it. It's a pea shooter, but it's marginally better if you zoom in. No idea what the enemies are supposed to be, rival soldiers I assume. I get some real Half-Life vibes from this game, an underground rocket solo filled with green acid and bloodthirsty special forces. The map is definitely an upgrade from the last game, since the tunnels offer actual cover, and there are areas of interest that you can actually explore since you're not constantly being shot at. This game normalised map secrets in Clash 3D games, and this one? I love it. The grenade launcher is an amazing weapon, even if it acts more like a rocket launcher. If you want it, you're forced to enter the main silo, which is usually a death trap anyway, and operate a janky cargo lift to open the secret room. It's a lot of fun to turn a squad of soldiers into red mist with this weapon, but the weird timing of the blast doors means that you can miss your shot entirely. On the other hand, an enemy who somehow gets his weapon is a menace. Game balancing has been flipped on its head since the last game. Instead of weak players and powerful weapons, you're a tank armed with a nerf gun. This, in my opinion, is where the grenade launcher is such a godsend. It gives you an actual way to deal with crowds of enemies. If only the developer learned from this game when making the next one. I'll say it now, I don't like Sniper Clash. I'll explain why in a little bit. I guess you play some kind of special forces sniper in this game, battling through a generic war-torn Middle Eastern map. As you might expect, everyone starts with a sniper rifle now, and I hate it. It's hard to hit anything with it, and even if you do, there's no headshots, so you'll have to scramble for cover until the game allows you to fire another shot. This hurts the gameplay in so many ways. Clash 3D rounds are generally 2-3 to three minutes long, and the maps support this. They're tight, compact arenas which push players and enemies together, making sure you spend as much of the round as possible fighting. Now in Sniper Clash, the maps are still built on the hallways surrounding main arena philosophy, but you're armed with a slow, unsatisfying rifle. In most games, snipers utilise choke points and long range to dominate the enemy, but that doesn't work in a game that's previously all about high octane short range combat. The developer compensated for this by stretching the map upwards. There are now several trampolines which launch you into the air. This game is based on a capture the flag system. I can't wrap my head around it. Do you deliver the enemy's flag to your base? Are you supposed to just keep the enemy from getting your flag? Which part of the map the flag is supposed to go in? None of this is conveyed to the player, and to even do this you have to go even further into close range to grab the flag, missing the point of the sniper entirely. I eventually found that quick scoping was vaguely effective, but it wasn't fun. Apparently there's a secret rocket launcher in this map, but I couldn't get to it. It's a good thing the next game released, or this series reputation may have never recovered. I'm going to say it, I love Airport Clash. It is the best game in the Clash 3D series, hands down. The premise is insane. You're part of some kind of raider gang, fighting for control of a derelict airport terminal which is inhabited by another gang. You start the game with a goddamn minigun, but would you believe me if I said there was an even better weapon? Yes, a sniper rifle. And it's not the long range fly swat from the last game, oh no, it's legendary. With two shots you can blast an enemy into a storm of viscera, and oh my god does it feel good. 
the map design perfectly lends itself to this style of combat. It's much larger than previous games, with the main terminal, the rooftop and the two faction spaces to explore. You can 100% sit on the airport roof and explode enemies from above. Since the game is a lot more open, sniping is a natural option. This game does sniping better than Sniper Clash did. The game plays a more typical team deathmatch, but if you grab a bomb from the main terminal and bring it to the enemy base, it will increase your kill count by anywhere from 10 to 40. Don't expect your teammates to help though. It was about now that I realised this game was fake multiplayer. I mean, no human players act like this, right? Does Airport Clash have friendlies? <laughs> you can shoot your teammates if you want, and if they're carrying that bomb, you definitely should. Deliver that thing yourself, or just get a kill streak from the airport roof. Both are fun. This game manages to strike a perfect balance compared to the previous games. In no other game could you take on this many enemies and conceivably succeed. In Farm Clash, you would be killed by a single lucky shot. In Rocket Clash, you wouldn't have the firepower to take on a group like this. In Sniper Clash, let's just forget that one. If you play any games in this video, Airport Clash is probably your best bet. In this one, you play as a Sniper Santa, fighting for control of his North Pole submarine bay. You know, Santa's iconic submarine? Anyway, the elves are striking, so you gotta do something about it. This game has an actual headshot system, and while they can be hard to land, they deliver in the gory Clash 3D tradition. So how do you deal with rogue elves? By burning their snowman, or pagan idol. Wait, Baba Yaka? What?! This game is insane. You can ride chunks of ice across the harbour to steal the snowman, which must be delivered to the enemy fire like the airport Clash bomb. There is now swimming, which is awful. Much like swimming in the Arctic Circle in real life, you'll probably die. You certainly feel like you're accomplishing something in this game, catapulting fearlessly into enemy territory to steal their effigy and burn it, rather than wandering around post-apocalyptic Heathrow while your teammates have a picnic. Fun-wise, I'd say this game is better than Farm and Rocket, indefinitely better than Sniper, but not the kick-ass mayhem of Airport. You should still check it out though, if not for the Penguins, which are definitely in the wrong hemisphere. The first of the Heroes sub-series. This game is interesting, even if the menu is confusing. You have four classes, which roughly boil down to Fast Assault Rifle Guy, Tough Shotgun Guy, Nimble Sniper, and Grenade Guy. However, all classes have throwable grenades, which are mostly ineffective. You have to collect a lucky can, take it somewhere, and at this point I was getting a bit tired of the same gameplay loop. The map this time is massive, with valleys and bridges and underground chambers. If anything, this proves that I was right about the link between gameplay and level design. Ninja Clash is somewhat of a barren game, where enemies just cluster around one or two sub-areas and you're left wondering if Temple Dojo God knows what by yourself. I think there are powers too? Maybe? I can't tell. Your character glows and it maybe blocks some damage? The game can be really hectic at times, it's hard to tell what's going on. Jump pads launch you chaotically across the map, all while the cheesy kung fu movie voice lines play in the background. It's weird and sometimes unplayable, but it's definitely a memorable one. You know how I've been mostly positive with these games? Well, this is where the Clash 3D series plummets. Oh god, what am I looking at? What do these buttons do? What the hell is this? What the hell is this? I can't take this anymore. I'm passing out. I got Moon Clash breaks me. I can't tell what is going on, what I'm supposed to be doing, anything. My gun is this god-awful electric thing, I can't tell whether this is a capture the flag or just another deathmatch. The main room has this awful bouncy castle panopticon that you can't escape, and all the while these generic flag flags have a few cubes that can your ears. The rest of the map is barren tubes and weird server rooms with no enemies, and so your only chance of winning is entering the psychedelic thunderdome, which will cost you at least two of your five senses. I can't even properly critique this game because I don't get it. I tried with different classes and it's still awful. You know, I think there's one kind of person who would enjoy this game, an alien with no prior exposure to video games. I generally enjoy the Clash 3D series, but there's no denying that the games are janky, broken, and altogether rough around the edges. But there's a chaotic joy to playing them, where you blast enemies into pace while you're bouncing around the map at Mac 5. Since you're watching this video, you have access to the internet, so go ahead, try out a few of these games. But not Sniper Clash. Or Moon Clash. See you!